So this is module 6 entitled Assessing Security Posture with Software Tools. So in this uh, module, we are to look into different penetration testing concepts and techniques. We look into different softwares that are under security posture assessments. Um, we look into packet sniffing tools, packet protocol analyzers, and vulnerability scanning software tools. So in security posture assessment, this is where we conduct vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, reconnaissance. Okay, reconnaissance again, what we mean by reconnaissance is information gathering. Okay, so we should conduct uh, reconnaissance through vulnerability scanning and also through penetration testing. Um, in uh, NIST came up with a standard uh, that is in relation to security posture assessment. This is under 800-115. Uh, in this standard, it uh, emphasizes that uh, in the security posture assessment, very important to conduct testing uh, to discover vulnerabilities and to prove effect in effectiveness of security controls. Also very important to uh, examine uh, assessment objects. Uh, objects, what we mean by objects are, this may be hardware, software, or people within the organization uh, to understand um, the um, to understand the security system in terms of the strengths and weaknesses uh, of the security system that the organization has and to identify any um, and to identify also this uh, uh, weak, especially the weaknesses of the security system um, also take note that um, one uh, one agenda of security posture uh, assessment is to uh, identify if the organization is prone to social engineering types of an attack. So very important to also interview personnel um, to, in order to gather information and probe attitudes towards the understanding of security. Uh, what we mean by vulnerability scanning is this is the process of auditing a network for known vulnerabilities. Such vulnerabilities may be like an unpatched, unpatched software applications or a host with no antivirus software or maybe the, or an open ports, no or ports that are uh, that are inactive or um, uh, those uh, weak passwords also are considered as vulnerabilities. Okay. Uh, also, the, um, there there may be lack of security controls in an organization. That's also one one thing. Or maybe let's say those default configurations, Apple default passwords, are still being set. They're not being changed. So these are are some that can be detected by a vulnerability scanning procedure or using a vulnerability scanning tools. Um, penetration testing, also known as pen test, also known as ethical hacking. This involves thinking like an attacker and trying to per penetrate target and um, and trying to penetrate target security system. Uh, in penetration testing, it involves to verify a threat uh, that indeed it exists. Uh, we use surveillance, social engineering, network scanners vulnerability assessment tools to identify these vulnerabilities and attempt to exploit. Again, in penetration testing, you you work like an, a, a hacker or an attacker. Okay, that's the agenda of penetration testing. So we can consider these types of testing very dangerous. Dangerous. So we have to really be cautious. Um, if our role, job role, is a penetration tester, there are frameworks or methodologies out there that a penetration te tester may in, um, observe and may strictly observe and um, fo follow um, to ensure that these types of testing be successful. Okay, to ensure that the objective um, of conducting the penetration testing with is really met. Uh, penetration testing is considered as active test security controls. A while ago, we've discussed about vulnerability scanning. It's more of the passive. So again, vulnerability scanning is more of passive scanning. Penetration testing is more of an active scanning or active test. Okay, so uh, in active tests, we uh, probe controls for configuring weaknesses, identifying errors such as weak passwords and software vulnerabilities. Okay, so again, penetration testing is considered as an active active scanning or active reconnaissance also. Uh, some guidelines we need to uh, um, to know. 
uh, with, with regards to penetration testing is first, if the penetration testing will uh, be a no holds barred or smash and grab type of an activity or there are specific rules and restrictions need to be observed. Example, you are hired as a penetration tester. There are organizations would say, okay, you may use any tools, any knowledge you know, uh, and find any vulnerabilities you may know um, in our system. Okay, so there are no rules or restrictions that were stated by the company. So that's under the no holds barred. There are kinds of penetration testing um, where the agreement is there are only specific system or parts in the infrastructure where you will conduct penetration testing. And then you, there are specific rules and restrictions you need to observe. Okay, so again, there are uh, penetration tests uh, that also uh, you are bounded within the perimeter maybe because there are um there are uh, provide uh, there are um there are parts in the infrastructure that are supported by a, a third party provider and usually this third party provider they have an agreement with the organizations and let's say one part of the agreement is you are not allowed to touch their infrastructure you're not allowed to conduct any vulnerability assessment with their infrastructure so you need to observe these uh, kinds of agreement i have here some different attack profiles uh, when we say black box is this is the type of um, testing penetration testing where you don't have any knowledge or specifications with the organization okay the organization will not give you any information so it's up to you to um Find your means to gather information and to exploit their system. So, like, you know what? If you Google, there are a couple of companies who offer, like, uh, a, a fee, a payment, uh, a, a fee to, let's say, if you be able to hack their system. Example, I have attached here uh, one offer by Google, uh, $1 million if you can hack their phone. So, th there's no information given by Google. So that's under black box. White box is, let's say you're, the, an organization hired you, they have given you um, accounts, user accounts to use to access the system. They have given you source codes in their system and some architectural topolo topolo topological diagrams and other documents. Um, so that's under white box. If there is a partial information being given to you, example, there may be uh, systems that were uh, given to you Say as penetration tester, uh, there are system accounts being given to you, but not all. Okay, uh, there are source codes being given to you, but not all. So partial, maybe maybe partial also. So um, that's a gray box. So it's somewhere in between the black box and the white box. Uh, again, penetration testing is very uh, most of the time dangerous because you are to exploit a given system example you may install a virus or a simulated virus although let's say if it's simulated still it may affect the um, actual system that the organization has so it may also happen that uh, one of the uh, tools you may use to um, to assess example the capability of recovering uh, files of a given system so instead a file is being recovered it got it was damaged so um so uh very important to take note of this uh, uh possibilities so the best way uh to ensure that the production environment is secured when you are to conduct this penetration testing the much safer way is to conduct this penetration testing in a simulated environment or in a test environment rather than conducting it in a production environment Okay. There's this what we call as a sandbox, it's a simulate or let's say a simulated or virtual environment. In a virtual environment, you create uh, an environment similar to the production envi environment. Example, the production environment is using a Linux server and their computers, their, the client side are all Windows XP, okay, uh, connected through a Cisco switch. You may set it up. Uh, to a simulated environment and then in the simulated environment that is where you will conduct your penetration testing okay so it's much safer so if anything happens it's okay it's a simulated environment versus when you are to conduct it in a production environment okay um, where the actual files may be compromised 
uh, very important to have also non-disclosure agreement. Results conducted in the penetration testing uh, usually are bounded with confidentiality. Uh, that's up uh, one part in the agreement. Okay, so these things need to be observed during and even after penetration testing. Uh, very important when you are to conduct penetration testing to observe data privacy. Okay, you need to coordinate these privacy issues with the HR uh, there. Okay, may, may ensure that there is a data confidentiality uh, starting from the user accounts that you are to use, starting from those systems that you have access, maybe let's say an email, um, going to the results of the uh, penetration testing being conducted. Okay. Another is also a penetration tester needs to observe uh, laws, criminal laws, uh, with regards to this penetration testing as it varies from country to country. Okay. Uh, another is, as I mentioned this a while ago, that there are instances that the organization has in their infrastructure, parts in the infrastructure, maybe a system that are um, provided by third-party suppliers. Very important to check agreements between the organization to these third-party suppliers. Very important that, let's say, if in the agreement you are not allowed to touch these uh, um, parts of this system, okay, very important to observe these uh, agreements. Um, also, all authorizations needs to be well documented. So I have here different techniques under reconnaissance, gather information. There's this OSINT. Also, there are websites that we, that uh, are helpful. Example with who is we'll discuss that a while ago. Um, be able to like in the who is be able to you be able to gather information specifically with domains with the domains where an organization is registered to. Uh, I I I, I show done, no? show done. We will explore this in the penetration testing course. That's next term. Shodan is a like a Google. It's a search engine. Okay, um, but it's more focused on the security side. Sample, you may Google, want to Google um, in a certain uh, series or, or series of organizations that uses tel use, use, that still uses Telnet. Okay, so you may do that through this Shodan. It's uh, you may Google Shodan. You may look into uh, the website that uh, uh, that the, the Shodan website. You may look into this Shodan website. We've discussed social engineering before. Okay, so may way to manipulate people in order to gather information, and then later we look into uh, a scanning tool. We have I have a demonstration of Nmap, so it's a popular vulnerability vulnerability scanning tool. Okay, so it's under again reconnaissance. Um, in ex initial exploitation is an exploit uh, used to gain some sort of an access to the target network. This may be conducted through phishing email or through social engineering. Persistence. Persistence is an attacker is so persistent, the, it really is so eager. That's uh, the key word for persistence. Eager to um, really hack into the uh, system of an organization or to the network of an organization. So what the attacker will do is to, or even the pen tester to test uh, persistence of an organization, um, to test um, vulnerabilities that are under persistence is, uh, usually in the persistence, let's say, what happens is um, there is a reconnection to the compromised host. A backdoor is to be implemented, okay? Uh, and tester will establish a command and control uh, network to use controls to the con compromised host. host. Uh, the agenda of the persistence is the ability to, um, to for the attacker to go back to the compromised host and then from the compromised host, be able to access other hosts or other systems or servers that the organization has. Okay, so so there. So when once uh, an attacker has access to other system, so it happens through pivot, or uh, what happens there is that there is already an escalation of privileges uh, on the side of the attacker or say of the penetration tester. I have here some guidelines of implementing penetration testing. Again, very important to know the to set an objective in conducting a penetration testing. Main goal, main objective, why the penetration testing is to be done, okay, to be conducted. 
okay so very important to um, know uh, the benefits of this penetrate conducting this penetration testing also uh, very important to know the risk involved in penetration testing okay uh, again better if especially if there are uh, critical applications uh, and then there are a couple of pen tests requirements that are um, that may danger uh, certain resources in the organization better to conduct this penetration testing in a simulated environment okay also very important to use different box box testing method also to observe yung importance when to use a white box or a black box or a gray box okay so these are things to consider uh, when conducting a, a penetration testing so um we have network scanner okay uh, one example of a network scanner is there are tools that can discover topology or footprinting. We call it as footprinting. This is the part of the discovery phase where an attacker or a pen tester uh, identifies the structure of the target network. One popular topology discovery or footprinting is Nmap. I have a demonstration of Nmap later. Um, and then there's that what we call as adversarial scanning. This is a means to gain access to the network. Uh, whether if it's a wired or a wireless, uh, there's like air crack uh, where you can uh, crack a wireless password. So with that, once you know the password, of course, be able to gain access to the wireless network. So that's one example of this adversarial sc uh, scanning. Also, um, there's that what we call a stealth, uh, stealthy scans. In stealthy scan, a example, the pen tester will uh, uh, scan the network, but the um, usually, the organization has this IDS, intrusion detection system, but in the stealthy scan, it's like it's a quiet scan. Uh, the IDS, what the scanning tool will do is to block uh, the, the scans. Uh, uh, in a way, the IDS will not be alerted okay, uh, to these kinds of an event. Okay? So, that's the good thing with um, stealthy scans. Uh, I have here some network management suit. Okay, uh, we have Microsoft System Center and HP OpenView. Uh, we've learned during our Cisco days uh, with the command to know the IP address set in a an end device. Uh, we use command prompt and when we type IP config, a much more detailed information is IP config slash all. Like in the IP config slash all, this is where we can see the MAC. This is a sort of IP. We have this because it's a, a note, right? it's a command where we can gather information. No, so it can be used to uh, as a reconnaissance. So, like again, IP config slash all can okay, be able to identify the MAC address of a given end computer. Also, this is its IP, the subnet mask, the default gateway, which is the IP address of the router, the IP address of the DHCP and the DNS server are also di displayed in the IP config slash all. If it's a Linux base, the equivalent of IP config is IF config. And then some of the techniques that vulnerability scanning be able to detect a series of information is uh, there's that what we call as a ping scan. In a ping scan or ping sweep, what the vulnerability scanning tool will do, like an end map, it, is, it will send ICMP requests to a range of IP addresses okay, uh, in the network. So expected that the host will respond. So the, the fact that the host responds to this ping request, that is an indication the vulnerability scanning tool will know that these IP addresses are active. So if there's no reply, so that is an indication that these are inactive. So in a way, with this ping scan, the vulnerability scanning tool be able to identify those active and in, in, inactive IP addresses. Another um, mechanism that the scanning tool may use is this ARP. Okay, uh, take note the ARP is a ad, which stands for Address Resolution Protocol. This is a mechanism to identify MAC out of a given IP. So what the vulnerability scanning tool may do is to send a series of ARP requests. If it got a, a, an ARP reply, it contains already the MAC, the binding of the MAC to the IP ad. Okay. Uh, so with this, the scanning tool may identify now the MAC addresses available together with its equivalent IP ad. Okay. Uh, and also another, a scanning tool may conduct a port scan. In the port scan, it may identify a uh, available ports, uh, open ports to be exact. 
Okay, I have a demonstration of this later. So, um, okay, first a review of the ports. So again, take note, so, um, each of our services, example, web browser or email or remote access like Telnet, NSSH has an equivalent port, right? Again, ports are, port numbers are used to identify applications. There are standard ports. Example, with HTTP, we have port 80. For HTTPS, we have ports 443. So we call this as, again, standard or well-known ports. There are companies who um, redirect ports. They use this port redirection. What they do instead of, this is for security purpose, uh, instead of using port 80 for their HTTP, they use a different port. Okay? So with vulnerability scanning, um, so... The, uh, so, with port scan muna pala, with port scan in the vulnerability scan, so if it detects that the, the, the port is, uh, there is an open port of 80, that's not yet an assurance that it's an HTTP. Okay, so that's why there are vulnerability scanning tool that has service scan. Okay, in the service scan, uh, instead of um, identifying or verifying the port numbers, it verifies the protocols or the service. So, this is somehow much reliable in, de in defining, determining the specific service okay so uh, what it actually do is instead of scanning the specific port number what it will send for example it will send an http command uh, such as get so if it receives a response so it indicates that the http is open okay uh, so that's uh, how this uh, service scan uh, works okay take note that the, the each of our services has specific signatures in terms of its processes so that's what being that is the part uh, that's what is being detected by this service scan also very important uh, is to I know identify the operating system that the device is using so vulnerability scanning has tools for OS detection so in OS detection it um, uses TCP IP fingerprinting. It uses that concept. Um, uh, in here, in the TCP IP fingerprinting, it uses the concept that each of the operating system uh, varies in terms of packet sizes okay, that they receive or they process. Again, they vary in the packet sizes. Example, with Linux, uh, the number of the size of bytes of each packet is 5840 for Cisco routers it's 4128 and for Windows it uses uh, 8192 so if the vulnerability scanning receives a packet with a size of 8192 definitely it's a Windows based so that's how it is okay and again we call this as means of uh, OS detection or techniques under OS operating system detection so, I have here a screenshot of Nmap. So, again, Nmap, it, uh, it's a network mapping tool. It discovers devices in the network. It identifies active IP. It identifies operating system, even MAC addresses available in the given network. Okay? Uh, and among other stuff. So, example of Nmap are Zenmap. So, the main, the main dem demonstration I have is about Nmap. Uh, Zenmap. There's also an equivalent Nmap for Linux. Um, Nmap is much is uh, a Zenmap. Zenmap it, it provides a graphical representation of the network, and I have a demonstration of Zenmap in the next slide. So I have here a Zenmap. No? you may download this also. It's a freeware. So what I did is I type my IP address here. Go to my command prompt. Look, check IP config. Type IP config, and then for me to know my IP ad, so I ha have it here. And then uh, the default here is it doesn't have this. I had add, I added this option uh, minus st for me to know you mga open ports, okay? So because uh, if I, if you don't add this, if you use the default command of the nmap, is at least it uh, no, it cannot identify the open ports. Eh, po, uh, mga unknown ports are the ones being displayed. So in order for us to discover those open ports, so that's one of my target uh, to conduct port scans. Is you need to add this option here in the nmap. There are um, lots of uh, uh, options in the Nmap. We will explore one of, uh, we will explore more of Nmap in the penetration testing. So, like in here, uh, I have now discovered open ports in my computer. Uh, 
on this IP specific IP and uh, also it identifies it identifies uh, the ano uh, it already actually uh, detected ano uh, eh, OS detection example it says here that the operating system I'm using is Windows 10 okay even the domain names are included even if the FQDN okay are included FQDN okay um, and it also conducts a uh, ano to, a ping uh, an IP scan okay it detects of course I don't have any network here I only have one laptop so it detects uh, uh, one IP there is a dashboard here uh, like port host it filters those ports that are open uh, in here uh, better to actually uh, the appreciate this the, you may appreciate this a lot especially this part of the topology if this this to be this is to be uh, conducted in a example during in in, the, in our campus in a in a laboratory actual laboratory setup for us to see uh, this how this topology works be able to detect um, what are those other devices connected in this computer okay there okay so these are some of the and then I I have typed the commands that I have that, that were uh, executed in the nmap are displayed here in the scans so this is the this um, demonstration of the nmap I might have a uh, I, I want I, I will uh, have a laboratory for this but it's only for like uh, you exploring those features that this nmap has and Wireshark there's another one demonstration with Wireshark in this discussion okay so thank you and then there's the who is tool okay you've used actually who is in cisco one this was discussed already in cisco one so um usually attackers are exploiting the who is okay uh you go to here to what is my ip be able to identify using this website uh the uh, domain name and the uh, uh out of a given public ip okay the domain name and even the service provider of your internet be able to identify it here uh, in these kinds of tool we call as who is um, uh, the command to uh, identify or resolve host names to domain names or to IP address is NSLOOKUP be able to identify DNS servers NSLOOKUP technicians uses this to troubleshoot issues with domains uh, equivalent of this NSLOOKUP in Linux is DIG it stands for domain information grapper and then the netstat okay netstat is a command for us to identify open ports okay or active connections diba? active connections and even the ports that are being used within, within these active connections we've you, you've used this in using your cisco uh, cisco one to be exact netstat stands for network statistics again it allows you to view statistics for tcp ip protocols and connections there are um, specific commands under netstat example with netstat minus a it will display all listings of tcp i tcp and udp ports in a, in a given system uh, with netstat minus r it displays the host routing table this was discussed in cisco one before uh, netstat minus e will display network statistics especially with the number of bytes sent and received uh, netstat minus s is the statistics of packets sent and received for minus n this displays addresses and port numbers and minus p are for the statistics uh, of, on a specific protocol such as TCP or UDP okay uh, under the output of the netstat we have the state state of the connection possible state of the connection may be into established uh, when we say established this is the normal state it means there's an established there's an established connection and the connection is active it's open uh, if it's under listen, if it's listen, that's the state, it indicates that the system is waiting for a connection request. If it's closed wait, it indicates that this, it is awaiting for a co connection termination. Okay. Um, time wait is enough time to pass to be sure the remote system receive a TCP-based acknowledgement of the connection. Um, uh, take note, if it's TCP, there's a SYN, S-Y-N, sent, right, to establish the connection. So also possible those those um, status are also seen displayed here in the under the state of the netstat command seen sent uh, also seen received okay there okay these are the um, 
uh, what are to be displayed under the state of the netstat command. Uh, Nmap also has this uh, banner grabbing tool. So in banner grabbing, it uh, enumerates or extract information from servers that th this includes network shares or services running or groups of users and so on. Okay. So again, banner grabbing is a technique to find out information about web servers, FTP, email, uh, and email servers. Okay. Um, also, uh, MAC address are identified in the banner grabbing. Again, ZenMap has a facility for this banner grabbing. Uh, and then we have this protocol analyzer. Again, protocol analyzers are tools we use for facilitating eavesdropping. Then we have a packet sniffer. These are tools that captures network frames over the network medium. Examples are live pickup for Unix and Linux and win pickup for uh, Windows. Pickup stands for packet capturing. Okay. Um, uh, there are appliances uh, that can read frames from the network media. Okay. Also, um, we have this concept in an Ethernet, especially in switches we call a sport mirroring. You had this when you were in Cisco 4. If you remember the span, switch port analyzer. Uh, I hope uh, it was, you had an a laboratory for this. Uh, port mirroring. So in port mirroring is what it does is using a wire shark, um, the uh, the frames being sent in a specific port. Let's say that port is connected to a server. It is being mirrored. Example, uh, let's say I'll try to draw it here. Let's say I have a server here, and this is connected to this switch. And let's say this server, okay. This one, this server, it's a, it has critical applications, so very important to monitor it, okay? So we can monitor those packets that are going in and out of this specific port of the switch where the server is connected, okay? And a way for us to monitor it is those, um, those uh, packets, or frames rather, frames forwarded uh, going in and out, ingress and egress out of this port, is to be mirrored in this port, okay, uh, where uh, you have your computer and where you have your Wireshark installed, okay, so the Wireshark will display all those pa cap captured packets, actually mirrored, eh? mirrored packets from this port where the server is connected, we call it a port mirroring, you had, there's an activity on that in Cisco 4, because Cisco has that kind of a feature we call as a switch port analyzer, okay, there, done. So I have here a screenshot of what a Wireshark is. Okay, and um, in Linux, it has this what we call as a TCP dump. It's a command line based. Wireshark is GUI. So there's an equivalent of this in, wire, in, in Linux. We call it as TCP dump. But then again, in the TCP dump, it's command line based. Uh, in the next slide, I have a demonstration of uh, some of the features that the Wireshark has. So I have, I have installed the Wireshark now in my computer. Okay, you may also do this in your own. Uh, it's a free software. Okay, so uh, first thing is uh, there are a couple of interfaces here that the Wireshark has detected. I will use Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, this is the one has, that has IP address, has a specific interface connecting to. Uh, I am connecting to the internet, but to my Wi-Fi. So better to uh, monitor those traffic that goes into this connection. Uh, and the Wireshark can do that. So, click this one to. Yan yung symbol na to, yung blue one. To start capturing packets. Da. Okay. And then, stop, post mo na tayo. So, like, um, so in here, uh, it detect that there is a packet being sent. Uh, for example, this is my computer. So, it sends a TCP ACK, okay, to this public IP. Okay. You see that? So, that's one detail that the Wireshark can um, uh, present. Okay. Uh, also, in here below, there are specific details like uh, the frame. I'm looking for the MAC. Ah, MAC address is here. There. Okay. So, this is the source. This is my... Um, yes, that's my MAC address. The 192.168.43.120. 
okay cmd uh, ip config slash all and uh, wi-fi adapter 9a6c right 9a6c see that c3 okay so it means that on the this destination side uh, this is its MAC address so with the Wireshark be able to identify what the MAC address on the destination side is okay so uh, also details about added information if you remember this is discussed in Cisco one okay uh, there and then details about transport TCP okay so um, so in the uh, Wireshark it displays the time the packet was received um, was uh, received uh, and it know it notes the source ip destination ip and the protocol being used and then the length of the header okay in bytes so there that's the wireshark you will ex you will be expo exposed to this tool a lot in your information security tool laboratory okay um e very very important uh, this this Wireshark is very important. It's a very important tool in network monitoring. So it, it, there are a couple of activities designed information security tool lab where uh, Wireshark is being uh, used. And then we have packet injection tools like this one, EtherCap, Nemesis, Copy, and DSNF. These are tools that uh, injects um, uh, or allows frames to be inserted into the network stream. So this allows these tools allows for different kinds of packets to be manipulated. Uh, usually, they are used to perform DOS or spoofing attacks. Uh, there's also what we call as wireless scanners, like an air crack. Okay, usually it can uh, uh, identify SSIDs, those hidden SSID. Uh, also, information in wireless networks such as their frequency, the channel, the security type, and let's say if you if you see if you see that the, it, it uses web, there are also uh, wireless scanner tools that can decrypt, decipher uh, passwords that were encrypted using web. Uh, then steganography. Stenogra steganography is the art or science of writing hidden messages. It is a form of security through obscurity. The main goal is to um, ensure that the hidden message is uh, only... Uh, identified or visible from the sender to the receiver okay so uh, one example of steganography is um, using graphic files like an image an, uh, an image to send hidden images I watched the Vinci code two days ago uh, it has a scene where it demonstrates steganography it's like it's the with, with the Mona Lisa that's why it's called the Vinci code uh, because in the movie, uh, the one with the Tom, the one with Tom Hanks, is um, there are hidden images with some of the paintings that Da Vinci paint, painted, <laughs> uh, like uh, the with the Mona Lisa. Okay, I, I think there's also one, uh, one scene also with the Last Supper. Okay, there's a couple of there's a sort of a hidden message in this uh, painting. So that is one. Uh, example in Da Vinci's painting. So this is one example of steganography. And then there are more advanced vulner vulnerability scanning tools. There are those that we call as vulnerability assessment. These are tools, sort of an advanced vulnerability scan scanning that can assess. Okay, it can evaluate the system security. It can uh, um, identify meet compliance requirements. Uh, on the configuration state of the system okay um, there are vulnerability assessment tools that uh, 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 has a list of known vulnerabilities okay so with this it can identify um, if uh, a certain vulnerability or a series of vulnerabilities are detected if it is of high medium or low okay there's this what we call the CVE uh, common vulnerabilities enumeration these are standards develop okay that um, um, put levels of um, or severity levels with those vulnerabilities that we have okay th th or that exists so usually these um, kinds of um, 
lists or or this list of known vulnerabilities are are present in this uh, vulnerability assessment tools. One example of this vulnerability assessment tools is Anesos and OpenVAS. There's also what we call web application scanning. There are um, vulnerability scanning tools that are remote based or agent based. And again, um, some of these vulnerability assessment tools has this list of known vulnerabilities. So it's very important from time to time to update to ensure that this list or database of known vulnerabilities are being updated. Okay. So we have two types of scanning technology. We have the passive. In passive, it operates by spinning, uh, sniffing network traffic to identify assets communicating on the networks or reports. One example is the Nmap, the one we demonstrated a while ago. In the active scanning, this is more um, intense uh, because what happens is the penetration tester would exploit the system, really um, be persistent to make a connection to the target host. This means it includes uh, authenticating and establishing a session with the host or running an agent on a host. Okay, so that's uh, under active scanning. Very important in vulnerability scanning tools to um, address issues of false positive and false negative. And we do not want this in a vulnerability scanning tool. What we want is our true positive. So again, we've discussed this before. False positive are it detects a vulnerability, but the true uh, score is it's not a vulnerability in false negative it did not detect the vulnerability but the true is there is a vulnerability um, example an unpatched software in a given system it was not detected but the true score is there is an unpatched software applications in a given system um, with credential scanning in credential scanning the pen tester were given an account okay so uh, scanning is is done through a uh, legitimate account. We, while in the non-credential, the account being given is uh, just a get guest access. Okay. So in here, uh, with the non-credential, the attacker may or pen tester pala. Sorry, the pen tester may be able to test default passwords. Okay. Uh, there. Uh, with credential, it's much more easy because again, uh, an account already was given to the pen tester. Okay, and the focus now of the penetration tester is um, less on the accounts, accessing the accounts, well, because it's given already. It will be more focused on the um, system itself and not on the account. Also, one agenda of vulnerability scanning is to identify, again, the lack of security controls, also misconfigurations like use of default passwords, also template configurations that were not changed in the system also misconfigurations of let's say access list or security policies that are wrong or um, not working okay so these um, items are uh, needs to also be addressed in the security posture assessment uh, there are exploitation frame frameworks. These are software packages that contain reliable export modules and features like agents uh, used for um, exploiting a given system. Okay, so one popular example of this exploitation framework is the Metasploit. It's a free exploitation framework written in Ruby, C++, Assembler. Uh, it is available for both Windows and Unix. You will have a series of exercises using Metasploit during the penetration uh, tester course. Okay, next up we have honeypots. And a honeypot is a computer or a host that's set up specifically to become the target of attack. All right, so we make it look very sweet or very attractive to a malicious individual, a hacker, or what have you. All right, so we set things up purposely and kind of sit back and wait. So it's more or less a trap, if you will. All right, so they appear to have sensitive information. Right? They're going to, we're going to sweeten the pot, so to speak, make it almost irresistible. If someone's hacking into our network, they're going to be drawn to that specific server or host because we're going to leave vulnerabilities open. So when that hacker does their vulnerability assessment, they do their penetration testing, right? They use their tools. They're going to scan the various servers and they're going to see, oh, look at this one. This has got all kinds of vulnerabilities uh, apparent on it. So I'm going to go after that one. Well, we draw them right in. And once we do that, 
we monitor that server, right? We're sitting back and we have tools set up to monitor and we can identify that hacker. We let them come in, we let them do their business and they think that they're just, uh, you know, running through and, and grabbing all this sensitive information. Meanwhile, we're monitoring that. We're identifying who they are. We're learning their methods and their techniques and what tools they use. All right, so it actually helps us to secure our networks. So we can do something else on a larger scale called a honey net. And a honey net is similar to a honey pot, but it's larger in scale. Again, that network is set up intentionally for attack, so the attackers can come in, we're going to monitor them and study what they're doing. All right, so here we have an example of one. You have our, our internet, our router, our production network sits off of that. But off to the side, we're going to set up a honey wall, which is basically a fired walled area where we have a bunch of honey pots or a honey net. We'll have a management server that allows us to identify and monitor all of this stuff. And then we'll have a number of systems sitting behind that. And there are actual uh, virtualized environments that are pre-made specifically for this, right, that are pre-made with a variety of different types of hosts that have different types of vulnerabilities exposed. So they become very sweet, very attractive to a hacker. They're going to be drawn to that. Then we can sit back and watch, okay, what are they doing? How are they doing it? What tools are they using? And so forth. So that allows us to then harden the rest of our systems within our environment so that we can guard against those very same types of attacks. Uh, and this ends the second to the last module of this course, module six, keep safe together, we learn as one.